Jason David Williams, born September 10th, 1981. Of all the early 2000s players and specifically point guards I featured and watched growing up, this guy was by far my favorite and to me, the best of them all. He really had it all. He was quick, strong, great personality, athletic, smart, great upbringing, and he couldn't have chosen a better school that fit his game, personality, and winning ways. There's so much I could say about this guy, because he's not only a past favorite, but also for how he turned a negative situation in his life into tons of success in other fields after, and never let the public see the effects of one bad decision. It's funny how life works. I spoke in my last video about another favorite of mine, Delonte West, who's a star contrast to former NBA player Jay Williams. I mean, where I come from, normally snitches get stitches, but I told on them. Yeah, I said I snitch. I don't care if you got a flat, train, planes, and automobiles. You better have my donuts. Now, mental health doesn't compare to what Jay Williams face, and I'm highly sympathetic to that. Like I said, I got real love for Delonte, and if there's anything I could really do, I would. But Williams has managed to make everyone forget about that situation as a bull and continue to progress in life itself. Basketball is only a small part of an athlete's life. When it's over, you better have a transition. This guy is the ultimate example. His career was short-lived, but his influence, diligence, internal strength, and fortitude is a great lesson for any young player coming up. Do the right things, respect the game, and realize how much more of a person you are beyond putting rounded leather in a cylinder. For a guy who, in my opinion, didn't have much deficiencies, it was complex to find more than the elephant in the room. But it's your boy JC Stunt of Growth, man. If a guy had a growth stunt, I could find at least three. Let's talk about them. Jason, as we'll refer to him from here on, is his real name. In order for there not to be a confusion with others of the same title, he decided to go by Jay. Jason's career, sadly for me, only lasted 75 games and 54 starts. One season in the NBA. If you watched Duke basketball in the time he was there, you wouldn't believe it if I told you. Why? Stunt number one, program facade. In the game of making it to the NBA, there's so much that has to go your way as an amateur. One of the most important things I try to stress is how significant choosing the right school is to your future. You choose the wrong school, it's over for you, no matter how good you are. Ask Sharif O'Neal, who recently transferred from UCLA, whom I knew wasn't a good fit for him because he's just not that good. He's not a high-level D1 player like the facade, social media, media, family name, and blue checks make him out to be. He's just not. He clearly should have went to a smaller school a long time ago, but that wasn't the issue for Jason. Because he, like I said earlier, couldn't have chosen a better fit for him. In high school, he was a basketball god in Plainfield, New Jersey, and in the tri-state area. He was a New Jersey player of the year, McDonald's All-American, Parade All-American, and Morgan Wooten Award winner for his work on the court and in the classroom. Everyone knew his name for both his skill and intellectual achievements. Choosing a school that is basically Jason in facility form was a no-brainer. Duke was a place that could continue to give him intellectual stimulants while also putting him in a position where he could win at the highest amateur level for an athlete. And it's exactly what he ended up doing. Well, JC, where's the stunt? How was this program a bad thing for him? Well, it's not necessarily Duke in itself. It's the idea of college basketball as a whole, the gift and the curse. Gift because choosing the right school will create that facade for you by putting you in all the best positions to have success. You being one of the featured players gives you what we used to call the green light, meaning you could shoot it whenever, however you want. Your weaknesses are now masked by the plays called for you to get easy buckets, the confidence you're building knowing an entire school loves you, and the numbers you will have to show scouts and GMs when it's all said and done. Duke has done the best job of creating that facade for a draft pick. Jay went there and was a star from the jump and national champion. He looked amazing in that offense and the prestige and winning set him up to be drafted all the way up to number two behind Yao Ming. 
being picked that high and producing those numbers in his rookie season isn't what the Bulls had in mind, I'm sure. But who could have known seeing what he's shown at Duke? Stunt number two, his shooting didn't translate. Jason was so good in college, man. Like watching him, it seemed as if there wasn't anything he couldn't do on the floor at that time. Super good player in the perfect system for his success. But he had one glaring deficiency as he made the jump, his shooting. As a freshman, he averaged 14.5 points per game and a career-high 6.5 assists. He shot the ball beautifully at almost 40% for his career from three and 51% from two. But this is where the secret to knowing how good of a shooter a person is. Look at their free throw numbers. It's not the sole way of knowing, but to me, the best. Jason was a horrible free throw shooter at Duke. LeBron like at the line, shooting a disappointing 67% for his career. He was the National Freshman of the Year, and as a sophomore, was even better, averaging a career-high 21.6 points and 6 assists, and shooting career highs from 3 and 2s. He led his team to a national championship and averaged 25 points per game in the tournament, winning the MVP and clearly solidifying himself as college basketball's best player, and it wasn't much of a discussion. As a junior, his final season, his numbers were similar and he showed he could play at that level consistently. He was the National Player of the Year, an award he would win twice. He averaged 21 points and 5 assists, but his team lost in the semifinals to Indiana. He left for the draft high on confidence and expectation. What college did for him though was placed him on a pedestal his skills for the pro game couldn't match as yet. He stepped in and noticed that crossover he got on physical education majors was no longer a factor. His extremely short arms and inability to hit NBA threes didn't help either. As a rookie, he averaged just 9 points, 4 assists, 32% from 3, attempting almost 3 a game. He wasn't as quick as NBA guards, wasn't able to gain advantage strength-wise, and wasn't long or tall enough to get his normal jumper off at that time. Not saying he wouldn't have developed into that, because he's a smart guy, and seeing what you lack as a rookie can most times be fixed in year two especially from a high-level talent like Jay was. That year, the NBA brought his skill level all the way down and he looked like a regular player. Had he had more time in the league though, I believe he would have fixed his shooting and be able to make an impact. Why didn't he have more time? Stunt number three, I shouldn't be doing a lot of things, but who's gonna stop me? Was the quote from Williams right before the accident as he hopped on his new motorcycle, beautiful summer day, before another possible workout to get ready for the upcoming season. It was a day Jason would never forget. Williams' infatuation with motorcycles grew to enormous heights in the time his team were set not to make the playoffs, and he had nothing but free time on his hands. He would often go on late night rides with his motorcycle friends, and in one incident saw a guy lose control of his bike, crashed, and flew in the air for as Jason stated, seemed like forever. That guy left with a few broken bones, Jason not so lucky. There was also the warning he got in the form of a dream that showed him crashing into something right before he woke up in panic. He was a freshman at Duke at the time. The NBA has a strict rule against players owning or involving themselves with motor vehicles of that magnitude, and warned that in any event something happens, they aren't subjected to honor your contract in any way. Williams disregarded those and hopped on his bike with no helmet anyway on his way to meet his best friend for a business meeting. Upon leaving the meeting, he revved the bike three times for his friend to see and hear. In the middle of his third rev, he lost control of the bike and it did a wheelie, sending him crashing into a pole. As he laid on the ground, he knew he messed up his life. With his friend running to his aid, he yelled the words, I threw it all away. And it's exactly what he did, as far as basketball at least. He severed the main artery in his leg, along with tearing almost every ligament in his knee, including his ACL. He also fractured his pelvic bone and required extensive surgery and therapy in order to heal. The Bulls drafted Kirk Heinrich a week later and waived Jason. Although they had strict rules and warned that your contract would be terminated in the event this happened, they paid him the three million left on his deal anyway to help medically. A lot of that money led to Jason falling into deep depression and abusing pills to cope. 
He tried to make a comeback with a few NBA teams, but it just wasn't in the cards. He was left with legs that were permanently uneven, making him have to walk in special shoes. He managed to turn the depression and failure around and is now a successful TV personality, businessman and entrepreneur. All in all, it sucks what happened to his career, but I'm proud of how he's used himself to create teachable moments for the youth and anyone that needs it. I'm sure he has days where he sits and wonders what life would be like had he never purchased that bike. So do I, but salute man, much success, the GOAT college point guard, Jay Williams. It's your boy JC, Stunning Growth, and I'm out.